Kamala Harris visited the family of Jacob Blake, the man who was shot in Kenosha and is now paralyzed, referring to their family as an incredible family and telling him that she was proud of him. And I kid you not, I can't believe I'm saying this, but the Democratic Party, their entire premise is that you don't know what's really going on in this country and they're betting on it. And thankfully, they have a mainstream media apparatus desperate to allow this to continue. Why on God's green earth would Kamala Harris refer to Jacob Blake's family as incredible or Jacob Blake as uh, why would you say she's proud of him? Let's break it down. It has been reported several links. I checked and, and I'll be very careful here. It does appear that Jacob Blake's father, Jacob Blake Sr., is an unrepentant anti-Semite who posts things so shocking. I have to actually censor it from this video. Is that part of an incredible family? Jacob Blake was was about to be arrested because of a felony warrant. He had assaulted a woman in her own home and came back and she called 911 and the police were trying to stop this man. Now, I don't like the fact that Jacob Blake got shot several times. I don't want anybody to get hurt. And it's unfortunate he's now paralyzed. I hope I'm a bit of an idealist in the sense that I, I, I hope that people who commit crimes or in this instance, accused of crimes, he's not been convicted. They can they can they can change. And how many stories have we heard about people who go to prison and they do change? They find faith or they find a reason to do better and they do better. That's what I hope for. So this guy getting paralyzed is is is, is terrifying. But you know, what's shocking to me is that quite literally you have Joe Biden, his campaign, Kamala Harris, the VP, meeting with a man who was wanted for a felony crime, who fought with police, who went to grab a knife and they tried to stop him. And it was tragic. But she's going to go and defend this family, the father, an unrepentant anti-Semite, according to media reports. But, but more importantly, Shay Michelonis, the officer in Vegas who got shot in the head, apparently has not received a visit from anybody. Now, I'm hearing that Trump may have called the family and, and, and talked to them and asked how they were doing. This is a police officer in Vegas who was asked to go out on the graveyard shift to help, you know, deal with the issues of the protests. Some of these people are getting out of hand and they needed people to be on the ground to protect everyone else, including the protesters. Mind you, cops do that. We saw in Portland when the when the crazy people threw the Molotov lit one of their own on fire. And the cops came in to save him. The cops are not evil demons. There are issues with police. I've talked about it several times. But here we, we, we can see the true nature of what's happening in this country. I am not a staunch law and order individual. I am not in favor for the most part of overall authority. In fact, I'm rather anti-authoritarian and I've been a bit rebellious. It's why I run my own company and why I didn't want to work for anybody else. I'm going to do what I want to do. Ain't nobody can tell me what I can or can't do. Uh, well, except the law, I guess. But you get the point. So I'm not in favor of expanding police powers. I'm not in favor of a police state. I don't like the idea of Trump having to send in federal law enforcement, but I don't like the idea of lawlessness. And quite literally now, you have the Democratic Party saying we will defend wanted criminals, alleged criminals, people wanted for committing crimes, allegations and unrepentant anti-Semites. Now, is this because the, the Republican Party and conservatives want law and order, want structure, want peace and harmony, and the Democrats are evil, snarling villains who want chaos and destruction? No, that's a bit extreme. That's an extreme view of things. The reality is maybe even worse than that. The Democrats don't care. They don't have a strategy or a plan. All they know is, look, the Democrats are supporting this guy for whatever reason. I'm gonna go support him. Are you, are, where's your principles, man? Now, maybe, look, you want to make a statement about it? I think the statement is very, very simple. For me personally, Jake, I'm, I'm sad to hear that you got shot in this way. I, I hope you recover. I hope I hope the pain subsides. I hope you make a full recovery. I hope, uh, uh, and, and in that regard, I hope there's justice for the, the alleged victim. And I, my, my advice would be, don't fight with cops. Don't try and grab a knife. They were screaming, drop the knife. This is what's come out. We need we need a proper investigation and hearing into exa exactly what happened. But too often, the people we see that receive the riots are criminals. Isn't that weird? You know, I want to I want I want to say I think the, the, the main issue is that Democrats just don't care. 
But what about the far left? What do they care about? Now, the Democrats are saying we need to somehow filter the far left in such a way that traditional liberals will vote for it. That's the name of the game. That's what Kamala Harris does. She says, oh, this poor victim, I'm going to go and, and, and talk to him. And again, I'm not happy about what happened. But come on, man, you need to chill out a little bit. Maybe go talk to the police officers who have been injured. Here's what the far left wants, however. The far left riots for the criminals on purpose. They are saying defund the police. They are saying abolish the police. They are saying abolish prisons. I'm not making that up. That's what they're saying. How can you filter that in such a way so the Democrats can use it? They strip out certain parts of it and then throw it in the face of traditional liberals who are like, wow, this racism. And then the liberals turn on CNN and what do they get? Garbage. Now, these are traditional liberals, not politically active liberals. I guess you can consider me to be like a politically uh, uh, active liberal, a disaffected liberal. You start watching all this go down and it gets really, really annoying after a certain amount of time because many of us know what's happening. It makes me wonder how much of my life has been uh, my, 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 how, how much of my life experiences have been framed through a fake media narrative because they're protecting Democrats. And I'll tell you this, a lot of it. And I started to see glimpses, glimpses of this a long time ago. And I think the internet is really helping open the door for people to realize we're being lied to. We're, be, we're absolutely being lied to. The question I would have is, did Kamala Harris visit Ann Dorn? Did she visit the family of Captain David Dorn, who had his life taken from him? What about any of the other victims? What about Aaron Danielson? I mean, for that matter, has Trump, has Trump visited any of these people? I'd like to see more focus on Shea Michelonis. He was an officer. He didn't attack anybody. He was just out doing his job. And someone, some Black Lives Matter extremist decided to put a bullet in his head. And that is horrifying and beyond, uh, <sighs> so far of a line, I don't even know where it is anymore. There, look, when it comes to Jacob Blake, you have controversy. When it comes to Michael Brown, controversy. Trayvon Martin, controversy. I don't like any of the pain and suffering that comes out of this, but it's not so simple. It's not so simple. Guess what? Shay McAlonis is simple. Protests happened. The cops were asked to come out. He went out and said, OK. And it, you got, there's a video of what happened. It's, it's been released in the court. He wasn't confronting anybody. He wasn't yelling at anybody. He wasn't attacking anybody. And some dude decided to put a bullet in him. That is, in, it's absolutely insane. And where's the media coverage around this? Where's the national stories? I have been trying to dig into this guy's story, and it's very difficult to find anything. What I have found is that he has not been visited by any president, but it may have been that, uh, I believe, uh, one report I saw, Trump contacted his family. So I think that may be the case. He's raised about three quarters, uh, three quarters of a million, about $750,000 for his recovery. And I believe now the family is trying to divert much of those funds to other injured officers. But I want you to think about these circumstances right now with Kamala Harris going to meet Jacob Blake's family. The, the, the circumstances are simple. Cop doing his job, not confronting anybody. Now he's permanently paralyzed. They say he may be on a ventilator for life. I don't know what the latest update's been. And that's, and that, and that's, that's sad and scary. Jacob Blake, also paralyzed, but from the waist down, still has, you know, upper use of his body, but wanted on felony charges. Who gets the press attention and who gets the riots? Not the officer, a, a relatively young man just going out, having his life changed forever, essentially taken from him. Let me, let me, let me read some of this. The National Review says, Democratic Vice Presidential nominee Kamala Harris spoke with Jacob Blake on Monday, telling the 29-year-old who was shot in the back, that she was proud of him. Blake, told, uh, Blake, quote, told Senator Harris he was proud of her. And the senator told Jacob that she was also proud of him and how he was working through his pain. Harris spoke with Blake, who was in the hospital with massive internal injuries and is paralyzed below the waist after the shooting via phone while meeting with some of his family in the airport after she landed. You know, I, I do want to say innocent until proven guilty, 100%. Just on the surface, though, I would at least expect some attention to the officer who's been seriously injured as well, because he wasn't being attacked or targeted. I, 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 what I mean to say is he wasn't attacking or targeting anybody, and he was attacked and targeted. Jacob Blake, they were serving a warrant. Now, to be fair, to be completely fair, I want to I want to be I wanna, look, I, I, I try to empathize with everybody, even if they're a criminal or accused of being a criminal. Jacob Blake has not been not been convicted of, of a crime here. He did fight with cops. We can see it on the video. And so that, that does play a role. 
But I'm, I, look, she's saying she's proud of him because he's fighting through the pain and working on recovery. I get that. OK, to, to, to have a little bit of empathy, I can I can certainly understand this guy. I wouldn't wish paralysis on anybody. I'm against the death penalty. I know there are a lot of conservatives that are very serious about, you know, getting rid of the worst of the worst. I only my, my personal opinion is that lethal force should only be applied in self-defense. That's just me. You can disagree with me. That's fine. If we have control over an, an individual and they're not posing a threat, then I don't believe that. That's why I don't believe the death penalty. It, it presents very serious challenges that I don't think I'm smart enough to answer, to be completely honest. But in this regard with Jacob Blake, it was self-defense. And there lies the, the, the bigger problem. If you want to praise the guy and say, you know, you're going to make it through this pain outside of any accusations or the things he, we've seen him do on camera, I get that. I'm just, I'm, this is just another story in a long line of they rioted for a guy who was doing something wrong. Whether or not the allegations are true, he was fighting with cops. They tried to tase him and he went for a knife. The cops found the knife and he said he had a knife. And so what are they supposed to do? I've seen the videos of what happens to cops when they ignore these things. You get you get messed up bad, permanently disfigured or killed very, very quickly with a knife. There's videos going around. People seem to think guns are more effective than they really are. Like you got to You got to hit the right spot. So if you're defending yourself with a firearm and you're and, and you miss, there's a video going viral right now of a, of a guy shooting a suspect several times. The suspect gets the other cop in a headlock and then grabs the cop's gun. So, yeah, knives can be extremely dangerous. I'm tired of hearing stories about individuals who are doing wrong and then all of these leftists come out and cheer for them. And that and that and that it tells you something. We know the far left wants to abolish the police. They don't want anyone going to prison. Think about who they defend and think about their goals. No prisons, no police, defund the police, community policing, whatever it means. I'll tell you what's going to happen. People like Jacob Blake will go into a woman's home, be, will commit a crime for which he is accused and there will be nothing you can do to stop him. Unless, of course, you're armed as well, but they also want to take our guns away. Now, to be fair, the far left is not anti-gun. Seriously, people need to understand this. The far left is very pro-gun. That's why you see these, these you know, Red Guard, whatever they call themselves, walking around with a red, Redneck Revolt is a good, good example. John Brown Gun Club, far left groups, far left militias, they exist. Now, for the longest time, the right has been more likely to be armed and defend that. It's mainstream conservatives and many liberals. This is this is actually true as well. Many Democrat voters, traditional liberals are in favor of gun rights. That's why we see these union workers yelling at Joe Biden. So here's what I see happening. You've got mainstream Democrats filtering what they're doing now to the public. They're saying things like abolish prisons, abolish the police. And then the Democrats come out and, and, and tone it all down and say, no, no, we just want to reallocate funding. Joe Biden was asked, do you would you support reallocating funds away from police? And he says, yes, absolutely. Now he's come out and said the only person who wants to defund the police is Donald Trump. Well, Black Lives Matter quite literally has that as part of their mission statement, defunding the police. But more importantly, what Biden then says, is, I'm calling for more money, 300 million for 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 community policing. Oh, there's that word again. Community. What does that mean? Well, the left is saying defund the police because they want to reallocate it towards community policing. So is Joe Biden really for defunding the police or for funding the police? Look, I don't know what Joe Biden's for, to be honest, because he flip flops his position too often. Is he saying that we should stop where we are and give more money so they can create a new branch? I actually would be in favor of that. And if that's the case, sure. But he's also talked about reallocating funds away from police, which is the textbook definition of defunding the police. If you can't answer the question honestly, and if you tell someone when they ask you, you are in favor of this, why should I believe you're not? So I don't know what Joe Biden wants to do. In fact, the only reason I think he's coming out now saying I don't want to defund the police is because he knows it's a weak point for him and his internal polls are showing the riots are bad news. Well, here we go. I'm supposed to be reading this story, but I'm sorry, man. This story made me angry. It made me angry because of this. All right. Family of Vegas police officer Shane McAlonis speaks on recovery and support. This story is from August 21st. Why isn't this guy the story? Why isn't this man's recovery national news? Why aren't we talking about this dude who was just out, asked to patrol a protest, got shot in the head? Because you know what? I've never been a big fan of Republicans, and I'll, t and I'll even call out a lot of conservative media, because what they do very often is just follow the narrative of the mainstream media. Think about when they came out and said, Donald Trump called the troops losers and suckers in the World War One dead. 
How many conservatives immediately just jumped on it and tried to own the libs? Too many. And I started saying they're trying to take the narrative back. Don't let them. People are dying and dead now. Okay, am I supposed to care that Donald Trump said mean words two years ago? Spare me. I don't care. Donald Trump is an a-hole. We all know it. I don't think it's going to change. And a lot of people like it. I personally don't. But I do think it's funny sometimes when Trump pushes back on the lunatics in media. Okay, but I'll tell you this. What we need is to talk about the riots. We need to keep a focus on it. We need law and order. And I'm, I'm not someone who wants to see an expansion of police powers or laws. I don't like the application of terror law on many of these people because if it's already a crime, it's a crime and we don't need to expand upon it further. But Donald Trump has been talking about this. What do we see? Well, the media comes out and says, Donald Trump called the troops losers. They give Trump this softball, the T-ball, not even, so, you know, it's not even fair to call it T-ball. It was, it was a Potemkin a press conference where the journalists stand up and they say things like, you know, Joe, Joe Biden, you, you have been in favor of wearing masks and Donald Trump's plan on COVID has caused untold dead. As president, would you agree with us that you're the best? And Joe Biden's like, oh, you know, yeah, I'm the best. They, 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 they listen. When, when it comes to press conferences, they say that they tee up the person, giving him a softball to answer. They didn't even do that. They stood up and opined. And then Biden just said, yes. They quite literally walked over to the edge of the ballpark, threw it outside of the stadium and then said, it was a home run, Joe. And then Joe goes, oh, whoa, whoa, look fat. The point is a bunch of conservatives jumped right onto this and started complaining, saying, how dare you? They fell right into the trap. But you know what? I think many of them just like to play that game because their identity is built upon owning the libs. So whatever the left is doing, they react to. And that's it. How many people actually said, I don't care about Trump saying these things. I want to talk about this officer. I want him to get support. I want him to get to, to, to get more attention. You know what the left does? They set the standard. And then too many on the right just roll along with it. So when they come out and they say Jacob Blake is the poor victim and then mass protests erupt, where's the protest for this guy from anyone? Why aren't people standing up and peacefully marching and saying his life mattered? To be fair, there are people who do this, to be completely fair. But why isn't it bigger? I mean, look, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be fair about this. It's, it could be because conservatives tend to be outside of urban areas, and it's much harder to get all of the people from around the country to come into a single position. But this creates the illusion on the left that their rallies are bigger, more, uh, better organized. And in a sense, sometimes they are. I'm just talking about national media. I'm tired of conservatives chasing after the left on this one. Now, now again, I must stress when it comes to issues of police brutality, when it comes to issues of the rise of critical race theory, conservatives have been on the front line and liberals, politically homeless individuals, mostly disaffected liberals, have stood back and done nothing and just sat there and watched saying, yes, we agree with you. We don't like those people. It's rather frustrating for me to see many of these liberals who won't, won't agree with, you know, Republicans on a ton of things, but agree with them on the fundamental issues and the things that are important, refuse to stand up and defend them. For too long, it has been only conservatives who have actually been pushing back on the far left narrative and their lies, especially around the fact, you know, when, when they go and riot for criminals. Well, now liberals are starting to stand up and they're starting to push back and they're starting to join in. So that I can, I can, I can, I can respect and give credit to conservatives for. Too many tr traditional liberal, liberals, however, refuse to engage and then get fed the BS from the media. So Kamala Harris can, can, you know, go to this event and say, I'm proud of Jacob Blake. And then all of these normie liberals who don't pay attention, don't know anything about him are just like, oh, I guess in the end, I can only really blame the mainstream media. And I can give you some some good news to end off uh, on all of this. I, I, I want to make sure that I do better than many of these other outlets and make sure I, I, I help keep a focus on innocent people, pe people like Shay. I don't know a lot about him. Maybe he's a bad dude, whatever. Fine, right? He was a cop doing his job and now he's going to be and now he's paralyzed. So at the very least, we can say, shouldn't he get a, 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 like, shouldn't he get 10% of the recognition or, or acknowledgement that Jacob Blake is getting? I mean, he was a victim of a crime, but it's just not, it doesn't, it just doesn't matter to people. So anyway, listen, I'll give you good news. I try to do, I try to do better when I, when I, when I cover these stories, I try to make sure I'm paying attention to what's going on with, with officers like this who have been, you know, seriously injured in the line of duty. And I get right now, 
around 50, just a little, just over 50 percent of what CNN gets in terms of YouTube viewership. And that's with YouTube helping CNN. I believe independent commentary and real, real talk is I, I believe that we are taking over and we will, there, there will come a point where we shift the tides and the, the narrative will not be emerging from the likes of CNN and, and, and BuzzFeed and Vox and MSNBC or the New York Times for that matter. There will come a point where the news cycle will be set by us just on, on these platforms. It's not necessarily today, but we're getting to that point. The beltway bubble of Politico journalists is shrinking because people aren't going to them for news anymore. They're going on social media. They're going to YouTube. On YouTube, you can get my opinion on the matter. You can get David Pakman's. You can get Steven Crowder's. You can get Kyle Kalinske. You can get Sticks Hexenhammer. And we do not all agree. In fact, even like we probably all disagree to varying degrees. But you can get progressive, liberal, conservative, moderate, etc. If you come to YouTube. If you go to these other plat- other other sites, even Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, it's distilled. So YouTube is a better place if it can be done properly. I think it will be. And I think we're winning. I absolutely do. Based on the metrics and based on what's going on, I think we're winning. You can tell that these people who are following the likes of Kamala Harris and the DNC, may- maybe they win come November. Maybe they win. But I'll tell you this. This, this may be the last the last ditch effort of the dying establishment. There's a reason why Trump won in 2016. He narrowly won in some states, but he had a great victory in the Electoral College. They never saw it coming because the mainstream press is dying and they can't tell what's happening around them. It is only worse today. And we have studies to prove it. No joke from uh, uh, I think it's a uh, university at Illinois Champaign Urbana or whatever the university is called. We know it's getting smaller. Think about what's going to be like in 2024. The narrative is going to be driven by independent commentary and not mainstream news. While these big publications like the New York Times and the Atlantic may be seeing an increase in subscribers, overall net subscribers to many of these platforms, it's, it's on the decline. Ratings are technically on the decline. And only because of Trump are they artificially inflated. If Trump loses, the establishment's gone. So maybe Joe Biden wins. Maybe there's four more years. But 2024, if, 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 if you think I get a lot of views now, I mean, imagine what it's going to be like in four years. It's going to be really interesting to say the least. But here's the funniest part. The mainstream press doesn't even know I exist. No joke. They don't talk about it. They don't talk about what we talk about. They don't even know what we're talking about. And that's why so many liberals are starting to wake up to what's happening, because they're actually going online and watching the news. Almost every single story I've heard about walking away from the Democratic Party are people, it's, it's people saying, I decided to research for myself and I found out the media was lying. And that's Trump's true opponent right now. Joe Biden is not a functional candidate, but the media will make it seem like he is. It's an illusion. The media will finish his sentences for him. It's a trick. We're going to change the game. It's time people start telling stories they want to tell. It's time people start tweeting about things they care about. And the mainstream media will lose its stranglehold on the narrative and the narrative will collapse. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash Timcast. It's my other channel, my main channel. Thanks for hanging out and I will see you all then.